So good evening to all the participants and welcome to our uh, third lesson of uh, the Master in Innovation Management of uh, Ascari uh, Academy. Um, I hope you will find uh, my lecture uh, enjoyable, uh, pleasant and uh, instructive. Um, with the uh, third module, uh, as Clara was saying, we will deal with uh, open innovation with a specific uh, stake for digital projects. Um, as you know, I am a very practical person, so for opening uh, our lectures, I always want that you can take uh, some definition, some definitions of the concept that we are going to, to develop in the lecture. Regarding the open innovations, um, uh, also today, um, I want to, to give you uh, some definitions of uh, different orders and different uh, companies in order to give you uh, a first idea. Uh, the case for open innovation is clear. In today's rapidly moving world, companies can ill afford to retain outmoded, uh, closed models of innovation management, said McKinsey and company. Um, another definition, open innovation is a successful collaborative approach to innovation that can boost organizational performance in every phase of its innovation process said Gartner Incorporated. Another definition, another possible definition, by reaching beyond the corporate borders, a company can import lower cost, higher quality ideas from a wide array of world-class experts to improve the speed, the quality, and the cost of innovation, as said by uh, Bain and company. So uh, in these, uh, with these three definitions, uh, I want to stress uh, uh, the concept of successful uh, collaborative approach to innovation in order to uh, improve the speed, the quality, and the cost uh, uh, of innovation. So remember uh, this information for later reflection. But what exactly is open innovation? With this slide, uh, I want to give you a general overview, a general idea of what exactly is open innovation. I want to give you, uh, give you um, um, an exact ex explanation. Open innovation is the practice of a company opening its research and development department to input from people outside the company or to employees from other departments within the same organization. So by breaking down traditional silos between units and welcoming external experts and researchers, companies remove the uh, traditional limitations that a classic executive model may place on innovative efforts. So also with this slide, uh, I want to underline the, com the concept of company opening its research and development department in order to receive input from people outside the company, or also to employees that come from other departments within uh, the same organization. So in this way, by breaking, the, by breaking down the traditional silos approach, the traditional silos mentality, um, it's possible to welcome external experts, external professionals, researchers, and so on. Uh, and in this way, uh, it's possible to limit, uh, to remove the barriers that a classic uh, closed model of innovation may put on all the innovative uh, attempts. Um, 
the uh, concept of open innovation, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, was created in 2003 by uh, Professor Henry Chesbra, uh, research professor at the University of Berkeley and also at my university, University Louis Guidocani. Today, uh, he said that uh, today useful knowledge is widely distributed. And there is no company. And uh, how mother, um, how big uh, um, is uh, could it could be that can maximize the potential of innovation entirely on its own? So, Professor Chesbra, with its words, uh, with its uh, ideas, uh, explains that this open model, uh, this open arrangement of innovation offers to companies a decentralized approach to innovation that empowers growth. So um, as we, we um, prosecute in our, in our studies of innovation management, the first objective that we want to achieve is the growth of our companies. And the uh, Professor Chesbra, said that with this uh, special decentralized approach, uh, with this uh, open approach to innovation, we can foster growth uh, for our companies. Um, in his book, uh, this is the book, uh, Open Innovation, the new imperative for creating and profiting from, from technology. In his book, uh, uh, Professor Chesbra defines uh, open innovation as the use of purposive inflows and outflows of knowledge to accelerate internal innovation and uh, to expand the markets for external use of innovation. So we, um, we start to, um, to take some, some concepts, some theories. For example, we can recall the concept of the use of purposive inflows and outflows of knowledge in order to accelerate internal innovation, but also with the aim to expand the markets for external use of innovation. So knowledge, expansion of knowledge, uh, and also expansion of markets. Uh, this is a quotation that better uh, defines, that better explains uh, uh, in a thoroughly way the um, um, concept of open innovation elaborated by Professor Chesbro. Open innovation is a paradigm that assumes that firms can and should use external ideas as well as internal ideas and internal and external path to market as the firms look to advance their technology. So um, as we know, uh, we are always dealing uh, with uh, um, companies uh, that are in the technological domain, but uh, we will uh, we will study uh, further that they are not only uh, technological firms that are interested in uh, uh, in open innovation, but anyway, for progressing their technology, um, the firms uh, can and should use external and internal resources, external and internal ideas, and also uh, internal and external pathway to arrive to markets. This is the, uh, the main uh, idea that we have to uh, recollect also later. Um, I want to, to give you a simple explanation, a simple takeaway that you can bring home. Uh, in the left part, anyway, uh, you see the, uh, the scheme, the original, uh, the original model of open innovation as designed by Professor Chesbra. But as regard a simple explanation, we can say that open innovation has recently emerged as a new innovation model, we can say that it encourages 
companies to use the existing external knowledge rather than reinvent the wheel, we can say. On this way, it is considered positive to establish links with other companies, with universities, with research centers, with tech centers, and other knowledge sources. In the uh, graph, in the original graph of Professor Chesbrod, that we can look at the left uh, uh, part uh, of the slide, uh, we, uh, we see, we observe the funnel characterized by the continuous inflows and outflows of research projects. And the third boundaries that are very thin because the research projects um, can go out and can enter in the um, company uh, process. Um, in this way, uh, new research projects could be created uh, to advance uh, in the market, or maybe uh, these uh, new ideas can constitute future basis for future uh, projects, for future endeavors. Uh, in the I part of the of the scheme, uh, you uh, observe you you can see the research and development department uh, that uh, always constitutes uh, an asset for the company and that uh, normally uh, continues to work uh, on the main project of the company. So the re the research and development department continues to work uh, with these. Uh, uh, steady flows of research projects uh, in the funnel of the company. Uh, this is another explanatory video. Uh, it's, it's a mini lecture of uh, Professor Chesbra in which uh, uh, we can um, we can read uh, uh, ISO uh, with his uh, own uh, words. Uh, what is uh, um, open innovation? Hi, I'm Henry Chesbro. I'm a professor at the Haas School of Business at UC Berkeley and the author of the book Open Innovation. I want to talk to you a little bit about this model and this book. It's a way of companies doing innovation in R&D that where they make much greater use of external ideas and technologies in their own business and in turn let their unused ideas be used by others in their business. The old model of innovation was a closed model of innovation. Think of a product development funnel turned on its side where ideas come from a science and technology base are winnowed down and selected and taken to the market. This is a classic technology push model. It worked very well for a long time in many industries, but these days there's too much useful knowledge available in too many areas all over the world to try to do it all yourself. Instead, what we need is an open model. So now we still have in the open innovation model an R&D funnel turned on its side, but you'll see there are many more pathways into the model for ideas to come in, not only from inside, but also from the outside. And in turn, when those ideas are taken to market, some of them go through to the company's own processes, but others go through other processes, think of licenses, spin-offs, or joint ventures, to get to the market. So in the open innovation model, it's much more open coming in and much more open coming out. So look what, at some examples of this from companies that I've had a chance to work with. One company would be Intel, uh, the semiconductor company. They do a great deal of internal R&D, but in addition they leverage and complement that internal R&D with an extensive set of programs to identify, recognize, and then transfer external ideas from technologies, from universities, startups, so they bring in a lot of external stuff to complement their internal R&D. In turn, they build platforms for others to build upon and take advantage of their technology. So they try to construct an ecosystem around their technologies. So they would be one good example. A second example, also in the computer industry, would be IBM, where IBM, like Intel, has a strong, extensive internal program of R&D, but they leverage and extend that by partnering with open source software projects, for example, think of Linux or Java, and then building complementary goods that build on top of that, and then wrapping around that 
their IBM Global Services offering that install all of that on the customer's premises to the customer's requirements. IBM also does a lot to let their unused ideas go to the outside. They have a very active outbound licensing program. They work with other companies and allow them to use IBM facilities to make semiconductor chips. So they've really become much more open, both coming into IBM and going out. And this is not restricted to high tech. Procter & Gamble in the consumer packaged goods space has also created a program of open innovation. They have a very strong group of technology scouts that go out and look for external ideas to bring into the company. They also do a lot with their unused patents to let others make use of them with Procter & Gamble. So whether it's in high tech or consumer packaged goods, open innovation is becoming a much more powerful force in how companies are doing innovation. And this brings us to UTech. UTech has been one of the pioneers in helping companies lift technology out of universities and putting them into companies. Unlike university tech transfer offices, UTech's processes are much more flexible and geared to the needs of startup companies that might be looking for new technologies but can't afford to pay the ongoing royalty payments that universities insist upon. In addition, UTech has a number of services that they offer that help larger companies that are more established evaluate what unused ideas and technologies that they have that might be very valuable in a market to somebody else that aren't being used internally. So whether you're bringing ideas from outside from the university or looking to get value out of internal ideas being taken to the outside, UTech has a variety of services to, to help and assist in that. I've joined them as strategic advisor and I'm excited about working with them and taking the open innovation model further into the future. Thanks. So with this video, we have heard the exact uh, words uh, used by uh, Professor Chesbra, that was the uh, original creator of the open innovation uh, concept. Um, in this video, he showed uh, the traditional funnel of the closed model of innovation, uh, with a single direction of ideas that from the inside of the company uh, come outside. Uh, and then uh, he showed uh, the uh, novel uh, paradigm of open innovation with this uh, uh, new funnel uh, in which ideas coming in and coming out, uh, um, as he, uh, he said, uh, he, he told us. So, uh, he uh, also mentioned uh, some uh, business cases, some uh, uh, companies uh, with which he collaborated, uh, like, for example, uh, uh, IBM, uh, uh, Dell, uh, Procter, Procter & Gamble, and uh, UTech. And uh, he uh, always stressed uh, uh, this concept of uh, uh, deliberately um, permit this continuous uh, um, flow uh, of, uh, of ideas uh, inside and outside the company. Uh, we will see that uh, um, there are situations uh, in which uh, maybe the traditional scheme uh, is, um, is still needed, for example, uh, um, in uh, some sensitive matters, for example, military defense uh, and so on, and also uh, with uh, some um, products that are still in the process of being released. Uh, but we will uh, see you later. Okay, um, in this figure, uh, we can uh, strictly observe um, a simple comparison between these two arrangements. Uh, we have seen also uh, the comparison thanks to, to the video of uh, Professor Chesbo. But uh, these are the original design uh, contained uh, in the book of Professor Chesbra. Uh, so, in the um, uh, left part of the slide, uh, we see uh, the, uh, the, sorry, the original approach to open innovation. 
as explained uh, earlier, uh, with uh, um, a steady flow of research projects uh, coming in and coming out from the firm uh, boundaries. And uh, in the uh, right part, uh, we have uh, the uh, closed uh, innovation model. So an old uh, style, uh, an old uh, uh, way of doing uh, innovation that uh, is not still uh, advisable uh, to maintain, except uh, for the cases that uh, I mentioned before, for example, in uh, sensitive matters like defense and, and military and military issues, uh, and that when the products uh, are in the process to be released. Um, uh, so for protection of the uh, of the patents uh, um, anyway um i want also to give uh, another um, specific point of view uh, because uh, um, the uh, question uh, which is the right model to uh, approach which is the right model to adopt uh, uh, could uh, rise very very fast and i think that uh, open innovation apart from the arrangement that we see in this slide, is also uh, the uh, rightful uh, mixing up uh, of uh, external and internal resources. So I think that these two methods, these two techniques of uh, um, bringing uh, innovation into companies can be complementary because there are situations in which open innovation is the unique, the unique uh, um, way in which we can support the growth, uh, the growth of a company, but there are also some specific uh, um, situations in which uh, closed innovation uh, is uh, still uh, at stake. So I think that uh, a rightful, a correct approach to um, innovation is a, um, is a mix up of these two uh, techniques for the growth of companies, for the benefit of companies. Um, in this table, um, I have uh, um, uh, summarized uh, the principles uh, uh, that characterizes, uh, um, characterize open innovation and uh, closed innovation in a, in, a simple, uh, in a simple table that you can also deepen uh, in, uh, in a later stage uh, at home. Um, anyway, I have stressed, uh, I have put uh, the principal parameters that we can reckon with, uh, like for example, company philosophy, innovation ideas, the role of the customer, uh, mobility employees, venture capital, qualified persons, role of the research and development, competition, market approach, and the intellectual property. And I have uh, um, uh, analyzed these parameters uh, regard the open innovation and pertaining closed innovation. So we can read some lines in order to have a rough idea of this uh, comparison. For open innovation, we have a conscious import and export of knowledge to improve and accelerate our innovation processes, our innovation products, for example. Uh, we have an open exchange of ideas beyond the boundaries of the company. We have active co-innovators, um, as intended uh, for, for customers. We have a high uh, degree of mobility among employees. The venture capital plays an important role. Uh, the qualified persons uh, work uh, inside the, the company, but also outside the company. So there is a um, steady uh, collaboration uh, between uh, these uh, right minds and the company. The role of R&D 
um, external R&D can create a significant value, but also internal R&D is still needed to capture part of this value. Uh, to lead the competition, it is not necessary to offer the best idea, but rather we have to concentrate uh, on making the most of internal and external ideas. Uh, it's important to develop a better business model um, rather than being the first on the market, for example. And uh, for the issue, the important issue of intellectual property, um, um, innovation does not have to be created in order to profit from it. It's not the unique uh, uh, the unique objective of open innovation. A competitive advantage can be created and profit can be generated by others using their intellectual property and then uh, the company will acquire the third party intellectual property so, um, so implemented, so developed. On the opposite part, we have uh, the characteristics of closed, uh, the closed innovation model. So innovations emerge from the company's internal resources. Uh, the company relies on internal ideas. Uh, customers are seen solely as passive recipients of uh, innovative products. Uh, the mobility among employees is very low. Uh, venture capital uh, plays only a minor role. Uh, qualified persons uh, are very important for the entire company. So highly qualified employees, especially engineers, researchers and developers, uh, we can say that uh, they represent the most, the, the most important suits of uh, innovative um, endeavors. The design, development, and marketing um, are um, activities uh, implemented in house. So the innovative ideas, technologies, processes, and markets offer uh, a relevant long-term competitive advantage. To lead the competition, it's necessary to offer to market uh, the best idea. Uh, the winner uh, for the closed innovation, uh, the winner is uh, who brings the company that brings the innovation to market first. So um, an accent to the speed of releasing innovation uh, in market uh, is uh, also uh, relevant for the closed innovation uh, approach. And then the last characteristic of closed innovation is that the know-how is treated confidentially in order to protect it and to avoid free rights by competitors. So patents, copyrights, and protection of intellectual property are intended exactly to protect the company's novelties and research from the theft of ideas by other companies. Uh, you can deepen all these factors, all these uh, elements in a later stage, uh, but um, I wanted to give uh, a first sense of this table because uh, um, it's very uh, appealing for me. Um, another uh, element that uh, I want to, to give to you is the uh, four levels of inclusion typical of open innovation. Um, I have identified four levels, the intra-company, the first level is the intra-company level, the inter-company level, the level of experts reserved uh, to experts, and the publicly open level. So the first intra-company level, uh, the first level of inclusion. In, in this sense, um, uh, we can think uh, at first that the intra-company level is something that can contradict uh, the entire um, uh, fundament of uh, um, open innovation. But uh, with the intra-company level, we intend uh, uh, the opening of various departments uh, of the same company in order to share resources, knowledge, talents, 
capital stuff and so on so it's uh, it's still uh, something that uh, relies that pertains uh, to open innovation with the opening of uh, departments uh, with the intercompany level of inclusion, we intend the um, collaboration, the possible collaboration between two or more companies. For example, with the, with the case of an accelerator. Um, you have to remember that uh, in uh, in certain cases, in certain accelerators, uh, there is also an important role of venture capital that acquire equity uh, for the startup in the in the startup. Uh, the third part, the third level of inclusion of typical of open innovation is the level reserved to experts. So uh, not all public uh, is invited in participating in the uh, open innovation effort, but just professionals, just experts, just researchers uh, are strictly invited in this process for their expertise, for their knowledge, for their reputation, for example. And the last level of inclusion of open innovation is the publicly uh, open level. So in this case, everyone is invited to participate in the uh, open innovation process, regardless of, of their uh, expertise, uh, of their education, uh, and so on. So these are the framework of the four levels of inclusion. In the next slide, so in this slide, uh, we have a more uh, specific uh, framework that regards uh, the four theoretical approaches to open innovation. So something more uh, specific. This framework was um, created by Gartner, incorporated by this company, Gartner, and um, the uh, different squares uh, depend uh, on the level of instructions given uh, and also on the uh, quantity of the invitations offered. But, uh, uh, we we can explain all the all the squares that you can see uh, on the screen. In the first square, uh, in the blue square, in the uh, left part, uh, we uh, we observe the directed invitational uh, approach to open innovation. For example, we can mention the case of um, Boeing. Uh, when uh, it wanted to um, to establish a partnership for constructing uh, the Dreamliner aircraft, for this uh, with this purpose in mind, um, he wanted to uh, to work with uh, Rolls Royce and General Electric for constructing specific part of the uh, of the aircraft uh, Dreamliner. Uh, in the green uh, in the green square, we have uh, the suggestive uh, invitational approach uh, to open innovation. Uh, we can mention the case uh, of IBM, uh, like for example, uh, with uh, some open source uh, um, softwares like uh, Linux and Java, as we uh, we were uh, learning. Uh, uh, thanks to Professor Chesbra, but we can mention also the uh, jam events of IBM. Uh, these sessions are events um, reserved uh, for experts, for IT experts, and for customers of IBM. And through these sessions, the customers can pose many questions, many issues to uh, to the uh, experts of uh, IBM in order to receive uh, specific uh, advice, uh, specific answers. 
in the uh, right part of the framework, in particular in the um, uh, in the higher part uh, of the of the framework, uh, we have the uh, directed uh, participative uh, theoretical approach to open innovation. Another example that we can bring is uh, the company Red Hat. Red Hat uses uh, this kind of approach to develop softwares. Uh, so they uh, they are um, they use to to create uh, open source uh, communities um, for the exact uh, with the exact scope to uh, solve software bugs, software issues. In the last uh, square, the gray square, we observe the suggestive participative uh, uh, approach, theoretical approach to open innovation. And for uh, explaining uh, this uh, approach, uh, we, can, uh, uh, we can rely on the business case of Dell. In fact, Dell created a website uh, called uh, um, Idea Storm that allows uh, any customer, any user, uh, to submit idea, to, to submit uh, um, suggestion in order to uh, receive feedback, to, uh, to also uh, combine uh, their ideas uh, about products uh, that they love and about new products that they want to see on the shelves. Uh, other successful uh, and uh, bright uh, examples of open innovation, there are many more, but uh, I want to, to quote uh, the, the most famous, uh, I think, uh, of open innovation. Uh, the first case is uh, General Electric with its uh, first big project. General Electric, uh, with, with this project, uh, function like um, a sort of uh, accelerator. So um, it wanted to unite uh, um, engineers, uh, thinkers, uh, developers, inventors also, uh, in order to uh, implement new home appliances products. So a very innovative uh, approach with uh, successful results. Uh, another successful example is the case of NASA. Uh, with its collaboration with uh, Top Coder, London Business School, and also Harvard Business School. Uh, in this situation, NASA uh, wanted to, uh, to solve a mathematical algorithm in order to have um, a first project of the medical kit uh, for future uh, Manned mission on on space. So uh, on NASA, they needed to solve this mathematical algorithm for uh, projecting this medical kit. The members of Top Coder uh, submitted uh, over two thousand uh, two thousand um, possible uh, codes, and with this external help, uh, NASA was able to finally um, solve uh, this uh, mathematical problem. Coca-Cola was another example uh, of uh, success in uh, bringing open innovation uh, in companies. Even if we can think that Coca-Cola is, is a monster, is a big transnational uh, company, um, it maintains, uh, it wants to maintain uh, a, a stake of a startup in a certain sense with this Coca-Cola accelerator program. So um, Coca-Cola uh, continues to collaborate with startups in order to identify uh, um, customer needs, uh, customer uh, exigencies, uh, and all these startups uh, worldwide. Another appealing uh, case is uh, the case of Lego. In fact, uh, Lego developed uh, the platform called Lego Ideas, um, in which uh, customers um, could put their 
uh, their novelties, their ideas, uh, their suggestions uh, for um, producing uh, new uh, bricks, uh, new little bricks for kids and for adults too. In fact, I don't know if you ever seen it, but uh, Lego uh, has developed the packet of, um, of the Big Bang Theory uh, kit, um, uh, blocks kit, and this idea uh, came exactly uh, through the Lego Ideas platform. So it's a very uh, interesting uh, business case. Um, another successful example is uh, Samsung. In fact, uh, we know that Samsung, uh, Samsung uh, uh, has an opposite case uh, uh, compared to, uh, to Apple, for example. Samsung uh, um, tends to maintain uh, this uh, open access approach and uh, it can do so with the Samsung Accelerator program. So an ensemble of uh, engineers, software developers, uh, uh, researchers, and so on are explicitly um, invited to contribute uh, in order to have uh, uh, new projects uh, for uh, um, uh, for applications, for services, for softwares, and for, uh, for other products. The last case, um, uh, very uh, brilliant, but I think that uh, it's not so, uh, so famous, it's the case of Local Motors. Um, Local Motors um, is a producer uh, of vehicles, um, a very specific case of um, uh, producer uh, of, uh, of vehicles uh, with its uh, co-create platform and its uh, light car challenge local motors uh, was able to involve not only customers but all uh, but also all the communities that are interested in 3d printing for vehicles uh, it's a bizarre thing but it's real uh, you can check later and also uh, through the light car challenge, local motor, uh, local motors was able to um, uh, to develop the only uh, its name is only the only smart uh, bus uh, driverless. So it's a very um, a mini bus that is driverless. And uh, nowadays, uh, it uh, uh, hits uh, the roads uh, of Washington, D.C. So uh, when we see this uh, machine, this, uh, this vehicle called uh, Ollie, uh, this mini bus, we can, uh, we can remember that uh, it, it came from the light car challenge with this open uh, access and open collaboration approach purported by local models. Uh, in this video, uh, we will uh, listen to the uh, expl another uh, explanation of open innovation, and we will listen to uh, some points uh, regarding the case of Lego, so it's very uh, appealing. <laughs> So if I asked you, what's the most popular brand that inspires innovation for both kids and adults, what would you say? I bet most of you would just think of Lego. We can all agree that Lego has this reputation for a very good reason. But did you know that the company has an open door policy for product ideas? Literally anyone can be a Lego designer. On their ideas portal, anyone can submit an idea, and if it gets enough support, an actual commercial product will be developed and hopefully sold. Lego Friends, based on the popular sitcom, was developed this way and was a huge sales success. This is one of the best examples of open innovation, but you don't have to be like Lego to implement it. Any company can do it. Open innovation is the practice of collecting ideas from groups of people external to your business, such as clients, partners, suppliers, or other key stakeholders. It can even be used by businesses whose workers are in the field, such as frontline workers in retail, construction, manufacturing, to invite them to take part in your innovation process. To make things run smoothly, you might need innovation management software, 
centralized place to select those ideas and get them submitted, just like LEGO did. And then you can just sort through these great ideas and find your next unicorn. So with this video, we have learned uh, the fantastic possibilities uh, of uh, the LEGO Ideas platform, because uh, through this platform, anyone can be a developer of the LEGO uh, Little Blocks. And uh, another, another hint uh, that we, uh, we can grasp from this video uh, is, the, um, is the theory uh, of uh, open innovation. So open innovation is the art of collecting external ideas for the sake of our business. <laughs>
um, um, another um, another framework that um, poses the ac poses the accent between digital technologies and open innovation is this framework. Uh, uh, designed by uh, three authors, three scientists, uh, Barlatier, uh, Mensch, and Isran in 2020. Uh, this, uh, this framework is called the interplay of digital technologies and open innovation process. So it's exactly uh, the correct uh, intertwining between digital technologies and open innovation. In the left part, we, uh, we see uh, some examples, some possible examples, because we know that there are many other technologies. So uh, for the digital technologies column, we see big data, artificial intelligence, cloud computing, internet of things, blockchain, and social media. Another uh, specific uh, feature of this framework is that it's divided in three steps, in, in, uh, in three uh, stages, in the definition stage, in the design stage, and in the validation stage. And for each stage, we have uh, to, um, to support the specific inbound and outbound activities. For example, in the stage of uh, the mission, as inbound activities, we have spin in ideation and conceptualization with internal stakeholders. And as outbound activities, we have the spin out ideation and conceptual testing with external stakeholders. In the design phase, as inbound activities, we have system, the identification of system issues, uh, spinning external ideas, collaborative innovation activities with internal stakeholders. Um, as outbound activities, uh, we have the evaluation of uh, uh, pathways, of possible pathways for commercialization, patenting with the regulatory authorities, uh, spin out with other external stakeholders. In the validation phase, uh, as inbound activities uh, uh, to implement, uh, we have the, uh, the grasp of uh, um, growing market, of the, 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 the growth of the market through commercialized products and also some value uh, adding activities um, among the existing stakeholders uh, with the aim to enhance uh, the commercial growth, so the, the growth of our business. As outbound activities, uh, we observe licensing, selling technology products to early uh, business to business adopters, uh, seek monetary benefits, and start uh, eventual new venture uh, planning. The last uh, case uh, that relies on uh, digitaliz digitalization, on digital technologies, um, is the case of the Singaporean Open Innovation Platform. Through this platform, we have an active participation among uh, uh, problem owners uh, that are uh, SMEs, enterprises, government agencies, the participation of technology and market enablers that facilitate uh, the commercialization and scaling up of new solutions. We have also the participation of uh, problem solvers, so researchers, tech innovators, startups, and companies. All these actors um, collaborate in a, in a digitalized uh, world, um, eventually 
exploiting also some um, supporting material tools, so with uh, some physical uh, connection, with physical facilities, with the exact scope uh, to um, bring uh, into market innovative products and uh, innovative solution. And this case, um, this uh, open innovation platform was applied not only for uh, um, uh, for high tech uh, companies, but also for companies uh, that want to um, to foster their uh, digital capacities and that are interested uh, in this innovative uh, approach of uh, um, open open innovation. But let's see. Uh, an explaining video that beautifully uh, represents uh, all the uh, conception behind the uh, concept behind the construction of the open innovation platform and artificial intelligence to co-create innovative digital solutions the Open Innovation Platform has opened doors to tech innovation for businesses of all types. Agriculture, Information and Technology, Media, Built Environment, Tourism and Hospitality. We are here for companies from the start, from identifying business challenges faced to defining digitalization needs for tech solvers locally and globally, matching innovation projects and tech solvers, and kicking off collaborations to prototype solutions. With easier access to adopting and developing new digital solutions, we explored the possibilities of how innovation could help companies streamline operations using data to make better decisions and artificial intelligence to co-create innovative digital solutions that meet your needs. By inviting solvers to reach out to address problems and connect the dots of your innovation journey. We make innovation even more accessible with new features including these two key ones. A discovery engine that will intelligently recommend solution matches based on analysis. A digital binge that will speed up prototype development through a virtual sandbox and testing environment. The new features mean that we are scaling up and making things faster. Because innovation is for everyone and we can all play a part in architecting Singapore's digital future. Innovation today is truly open and global. Visit us at www.openinnovation.sg to join the future of innovation. In this case, uh, in the Open Innovation Platform, we have uh, uh, different actors like uh, problem owners, uh, problem solvers, uh, and technology enablers, for example, that uh, uh, collaborate together for uh, fostering um, digital uh, technological solutions, uh, digital solutions for all companies that want to, um, to underline their position uh, in, this, uh, uh, in the uh, domain of uh, technology. So with this uh, particular stick of progress and uh, technology. To um, uh, recap our, our lecture of today, uh, we have talked about uh, some definitions of open innovation. We have explained uh, what exactly is open innovation. We have quoted uh, the definition of open innovation uh, created by uh, Professor uh, Chesbra. Uh, we have given a simple uh, explanation of open innovation and we have also uh, brought a comparison between open innovation and uh, the closed innovation model. Uh, we have observed the, the principles in comparison. 
um, we have uh, faced, uh, we have analyzed the, the uh, four uh, levels of inclusion of open innovation and also a specific um, framework with the four theoretical approaches uh, of open innovation. Uh, we have narrated some uh, funny and successful examples of open innovation and for the uh, digital project uh, for uh, ICT project, uh, we have uh, talked about the IBM case. Uh, we have represented the integrated framework uh, that uh, unites uh, digital technologies and open innovation. And, and we, have, uh, we have seen the case of the Singaporean open innovation platform. I put uh, some bibliography that uh, you can deepen uh, uh, in a later stage with some uh, um, interesting journal articles, uh, some books, and some uh, websites that you can uh, consult uh, later. So many thanks for your attention and see you at the next lesson.